Hey there, this is Coach Chris Wilson here in the Critical Bench Compound. I'm so excited today going over how to hit 225 pounds on the bench press. I was just like you when I was younger. Uh, you might even be close to my age, but maybe you've never hit 225 on the bench press, and that's a goal of yours. I know it was for me, and it is for most people who spend any amount of time on the bench press. Getting to 225 is like that first big step. Uh, maybe 135 is if you're, if you're really young, but 225 is the benchmark. It's the weight that they use in the NFL combine. How many reps can you get? And it's, it's a weight that you can always be proud that you're able to do on the bench. Um, so I'm gonna take it step by step today on body position, on breathing. Uh, I'm gonna critique, you know, the, 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 you know, where the elbows are, hand position on the bar, the whole thing. And I'm gonna show you how to get to 225 pounds for one rep, warming up properly. Because I think a lot of people overdo their warm up, and by the time they get to the, you know, that weight that they wanna hit, they're fatigued. They're already tired. They've done too much work already and they're not efficient anymore. So follow me through this and I'm gonna take it step by step. So number one, start with just the bar itself, okay? You wanna get really good and really fast at moving the bar. This helps your explosive uh, you know, element of the bench, which is necessary, right? So regardless of the amount of weight that's on the bar, zero or 225, you want to try and move that bar fast, okay? So, when you set up, get yourself so that your eyes are underneath the bar, okay? So you don't want the bar way out here, and you don't want the bar over like your mouth or your chin. So you want to really set yourself up, because this makes a lot of difference when you go to take that bar off the rack. If you're in a bad position or do it wrong, you've already cost yourself you know, a rep or a certain amount of strength. So, get the eyes underneath the bar, tuck the shoulder blades in. What that does is it forces my chest up, okay, and gets my, my the, the barrel part of my, of, of, my, of my body pushing upward toward to meet the bar. So what we're trying to do by tucking the shoulder blades in is we're reducing the length of the arm so instead of being here's full extension of the arm without a tuck when I tuck I've now brought made my arm shorter in essence okay and I'm helping to lift my chest up what this does is it helps decrease uh, the the distance that you have to press okay so my eyes are underneath the bar my hands you want to get make, make it so that your ring finger, index, or middle finger or index finger are, are on the ring, on the gnarling here, right? So you, and that can depend on you know you, how big you are, how broad you are, you know what's what's the most comfortable grip for you. Anywhere around there is going to be fine, but make sure it's one of those three fingers that's on that first band, okay? So once you got the the tuck. The chest is up, your eyes are under the bar. Then all we do is just the smallest of presses to get the bar off the rack. Don't, you know, you don't want to exert too much energy in, in that, that part. And that's what's good when you're trying to hit 225, have a spotter there to help you take the, the bar off the rack if possible. Now we're in good position here. You want your wrists nice and straight. Don't let, don't let the bar push your wrist back like this. Try to really keep your knuckles pointed up towards the ceiling. And then as we lower the bar, we're bringing the bar down towards the nipple line or just below the nipples, not above. So you don't want to be pressing the bar towards your neck. You want to be pressing the bar or pulling the bar down towards your chest, towards the nipple line. As you do that, watch my elbows kind of come in towards my body. So I'm not flaring. This would be more of a bodybuilding bench press. 
flaring the elbows out to the sides. That's great if you're looking to hit the pectoral muscles more and, and really have more of a, uh, a, a, an effect on a, an isolation of the pectoral muscle, but I'm not really trying to hit pecs. I'm trying to press 225. So this is more of a, a strength uh, discussion here. I'm, I'm trying to teach you how to be most efficient in doing this movement. You're gonna be most efficient like a power lifter where you kind of bring the elbows in towards the body as the bar comes down, okay? And then when you press up, you wanna be really explosive. So why don't I go ahead and do 10 explosive bar presses right now. This would be, by the way, step one of your warm up to hit 225, is pressing the bar explosively 10 times. And then rack it back. Okay, so you saw me really take some time there <laughs> talking about tucking, you know, the, the uh, pulling the, the shoulder blades together and really trying to tuck the, the, the blades together underneath your body. Okay, what that is again doing is shortening the, the distance that the bar needs to travel. That's always a good thing. That also helps you elevate your chest a little bit more bringing that, those elbows in towards the ribs as you come down with the bar. The bar coming down to about nipple area or just below nipple area. If you're above in this range, you're, you're just gonna be weaker there. You're not gonna have as much power, as much strength there. So try to stay here or just below, okay? And be explosive on the way up, whether it's just the bar or 135 or 185, the weights that you're gonna work on until you get up to 225. So always work on being explosive, coming down with control, and really coming up nice and fast. So after you do 10 explosive barbell presses like that, now it's time to put some weight on the bar. So I'm assuming that 135 is a weight. If you're trying to get to 225, you can certainly do 135 for several reps. But today, you're only gonna do it for five. Okay, so you get your plates on there. Always use collars. We don't want the plates moving around and shifting because you are trying to move the bar fast and explosively. You, it's just always good to have a collar on there. I don't care what kind of collar you have, just make sure it works and it holds the plate where it's supposed to be. Don't, you know, don't try to, you know, uh, be cool or whatever. <laughs> Why people wouldn't use a collar, I have no idea. Uh, accidents can happen, especially when you're, you know, a maybe beginner or, you know, novice, a level lifter. You wanna always, you know, think about safety. That's why having a spotter or somebody there with you uh, to help if the bar was to, you know, slip or you, you, you lose strength. It's always good to, to follow the, 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 those safety guidelines, okay? So now that we have 135 on there, we are going to do everything the same that we just did with the bar by itself. We're gonna lay back, we're gonna get the eyes underneath the bar, we're gonna tuck the shoulder blades in, okay? We're gonna put the hands where we like them on the bar, okay? We're gonna keep the wrists nice and locked. We're just gonna come up, just enough to get to unrack the bar. Okay, we're in great body position here. We're taking a deep breath. Keep tight. Right up. And that's it. And then back. So just five explosive presses with 135. Most people are gonna say, that's not enough reps. It's because most people do way too many, like I said at the start of the video, they do too much work to warm up. If you do the bar for 10 explosively, 135 for five explosively, I'm gonna go up to 185 for three explosively, and then 205 for one and 225 for one. So the cat's out of the bag, you know my system now. Now, in terms of rest between, 
I would say just take the rest that you feel is necessary between probably no more than 90 seconds or so. If you feel you need up to two minutes, that's fine. Remember, the point in this video is how to hit 225 pounds, even if it's just for one rep. Now, if that one rep feels great, go for two or three. Again, have somebody there with you. Now, you'll notice we're fortunate with the bench that we have here at Critical Bench is that we have this nice safety bar that comes down the vertical, uh, the, the vertical uh, column here on each side. So this safety here would prevent the barbell from ever hitting you in the face area, okay, which is great. So if you, you know, had a bad rep or just hit, hit a wall with your bench and the bar came down, it's gonna hit here. So I'm fortunate in this video where I don't necessarily need a spotter, plus you know, I, I can comfortably bench these, these weights on my own. But having a, a bench like this or a similar situation is a great thing to have. Um, we're not, we don't all have that luxury, of course, but it's always good to have a really good bench to begin with. Don't bench on something that's wobbly and uh, you know some of these ones that people find in their homes, maybe not the safest situation, much like what I grew up with in my garage in the 80s. Uh, so now that we've gotten the 135 for five, we're gonna put 25 pounds on each side We've given me plenty of rest. Again, the rest is gonna be up to you. You shouldn't need a heck of a lot of rest after doing 135 for five reps. Just enough to catch your breath, refocus your mind, and be ready for what's to come. So 185, again, everything else is the same. I'm gonna be explosive, I'm gonna do all my checks. You should have all these little mental checks going on in your, in your mind as you, as you lay back. And number one really is I just wanna feel tight and I wanna feel connected. So I wanna feel connected to the floor and to the bench and I wanna feel tight throughout my whole body. I don't wanna feel like I'm losing power anywhere. And so sometimes what people do, they'll bench with their, their feet up on the bench, on the edge of the bench. That, that's fine for some stuff if you're trying to work on core strength or you know you're just having fun or you're just trying to do some light work for your for your chest or something but if you're really trying to bench for strength for for uh, efficiency you need your feet on the floor okay so feet are on the floor you're connected you got your points of contact your head your upper back your hips and your feet Okay, those four points are always part of the bench and part of the floor, and that's, that's where you're, you're, you're able to push into those, those points to be able to move the, the, the bar upward, okay? So you need those points of contact working in your favor. Some people have a really dramatic arch. Mine is very small, but uh, an arch is fine as long as the hips and the shoulders stay on the bench it's okay to have an arch. Because you do, again, want to be able to push that torso and chest upward. The more you can reduce the space between in a, the, your extended arm and, and the bottom of the lift, the shorter that range of motion is, the more it works in your favor, right? So now, with 185, we're doing just three reps, just three reps. Again, trying to be explosive, okay? We take a nice big breath at the top. Unrack. And rack. That's it, just those three, that's it. And then breathe, relax, recover. 60 to 90 seconds, we put our uh, 10 more pounds on each side for just one rep. So now we're getting close. We're getting close to where we want to be. And we haven't overdone it. We haven't overworked our bodies yet. What we're doing is we're really getting our nervous system ready. Okay, we're training our nervous system. We're heating up our core temperature, but we're not overdoing anything. It's like a, a marathon runner, you know, getting ready for a run. Obviously he doesn't just 
get up out of bed and go run a marathon. He warms up, he does some dynamic stretching. He maybe jogs for a little bit beforehand, but he doesn't do too much work. He's not out there doing sprints to try and you know get ready for a marathon. He's out there just moving the body, waking things up, but leaving a lot of um, a lot of energy and a lot of fuel in the tank. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to really leave you, leave your best strength and power production ahead of you, not behind you by having done too many warm-up reps. Because I remember in, in college, I'd do, you know, 135 for 15, then I'd go to 165 for, you know, 10, and then 185 for eight, and then two, you know, 205 for, you know, and I kept, by the time I got to 225, I was already fatigued. So just do enough to stimulate and wake everything up. So we're almost there, we need a 10 on this side. Hey, before I forget too, I want you to go check out the free gift I have for you in the pinned comment below. It's the seven fastest ways to increase your bench. I'm going, I'm covering a lot of what those are right now, but if you want more in-depth information on some of these great tips that'll make you a better bencher, check out that free gift. Just put your email in, you can download it instantly, okay? So now I have 205 pounds on the bar. Not, you know, but we're, we're getting close now. We're only 20 pounds away. So we're only gonna do this for one really good rep. So get your mind right. Go through your checks and balances. Whew, take a couple nice deep breaths in a seated position. If you got your music on, if that's what you need, go for it. I love having the right music. Pick the song that you need that's gonna get you most fired up and dialed in. Again, eyes underneath the bar. Tuck those shoulder blades. Feet are secured to the floor. Hands are in the perfect position on the bar, wherever is most comfortable for you. Give yourself a moment, take that deep breath in. Right up, that's it. It's just one press. It should feel really good. It should feel, I don't wanna say it should feel easy, but the bar should move really nicely. You bring the bar off and then just bring it down. Don't bounce it. Bring it down under control. And as soon as that bar makes contact with the chest, just power up. If all your points of contact are in touch, your head, your shoulders, your butt, and your feet, you're tight through your body, right? You got that nice full breath and then just feel like you're trying to just squeeze. That's one point I didn't bring up just yet. When you're benching, you wanna really have a, a, a really good squeeze on the bar, okay? Feel connected to the bar as much as possible. So the more you can really make a tight fist around the bar, the better. You wanna feel like the bar is just an extension of your arms, okay? You are one with the bar, literally. You are squeezing that bar like you're almost trying to bend the bar. And that's what's gonna actually help you pull those elbows into the body as you come down. You're almost bending that bar, and then boom, you just feel so powerful at the bottom. And again, we're doing this not for reps, we're doing this for you know, helping you hit. So, and you can use this method for any weight that you're trying to get to. You'd use the same method for 250 pounds, or 275, or 315. Obviously, you would just need to know like what, what are the, the poundages now that I need to, to hit, the thresholds of weight that I need to go to in order to get to you know, the one rep max I'm kind of looking to hit. So you know, still, I always say start with the bar by itself. You still might even want to do 135 for five. And then from there, it would be up to you. I mean, if you're going for 315, you'd probably jump from 135 to 225, and then 225 to 275, and then you'd probably be ready for your 315. So just to kind of, for you, for you guys who are maybe looking what's beyond hitting 225 for one, that would, that would be your method for 315 uh, potentially. So, again, I'm not taking too much rest time. Now I gotta just load my bar, get it ready. All right, so 225 pounds, you are primed, you are ready, your nervous system is ready to go, you haven't uh, fatigued your muscles yet, you're just awake, 
and everything is locked in and dialed in, right? So you're setting yourself up for success for this one rep, okay? So go through your checks and balances, get a good breath, get that right song playing, lay under the bar, get those shoulder blades really tucked in. Hands are in perfect position, feet are pushing down. Take that big breath. And up. And it's as easy as that. <laughs> now, go back and watch this video a few more times if you need to. Uh, all those little cues, you need to, those just need to be second nature, okay? Getting into that proper position. You don't want any breaks in that flow that you have. So you're connecting again from the floor, you're coming up through your legs to your butt, to your back, to your head, and then right up through your arms to the, to the bar. So you don't want any breaks in strength there. There's a really nice flow of energy there that needs to be uh, you know, you need to be mindful of, okay? So, you know, I just, I love the bench press. It's a great, it's one of the, you know, the big three exercises, right? You got the bench, you got the deadlift, and you got the squat. Those three are the, the, the lifts that really help people evaluate overall strength and power production. So, in order to get really great at the bench press, you, there's a lot going on. It's a lot of different fine tuning and technique things that you can do. You might have a lot of strength, but your technique is off. So hopefully this video helps you to put all those little things together and clean up your lift a little bit so that when you go to hit your 225, it goes up just like that and it feels great doing it. You know, you do that one rep and it just feels so good. And then if it feels really good, go for a few or rack it and then do it for one rep multiple times. You know, so you can really get in good at, at doing it for one and then do it for doubles and do it for triples. And before you know it, you'll be doing 225 for 10 and you'll be craving the, the 315 mark. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. It's been a real pleasure uh, you know, sharing this information with you. I'm so passionate about the bench press. And, and all the great things that uh, it's done for me over the years. You know, it's one of the lifts that I love the most in the gym. So be sure to check that free gift I have for you in the pinned comment below. Be sure to subscribe to this video, to this channel. We have a video up almost every single day here at Critical Bench, and we cover everything. All things strength, health, fitness related, and I know there's a video here for you that you're gonna love. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you in the next video.